World War I, also known as the Great War, began in 1914 after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. His murder catapulted into a war across Europe that lasted until 1918. During the conflict, Germany, Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire, the Central Powers, fought against Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy, Romania, Canada, Japan and the United States, the Allied Powers. Thanks to new military technologies and the horrors of trench warfare, World War I saw unprecedented levels of carnage and destruction. By the time the war was over and the Allied powers claimed victory, more than 16 million people, soldiers and civilians alike, were dead. Tensions have been brewing throughout Europe, especially in the troubled Balkan region of Southeast Europe, for years before World War I actually broke out. A number of alliances involving European powers, the Ottoman Empire, Russia and other parties had existed for years, but political instability in the Balkans, particularly Bosnia, Serbia and Herzegovina, threatened to destroy these agreements. The spark that ignited World War I was struck in Sarajevo, Bosnia, where Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, was shot to death along with his wife, Sophie, by the Serbian nationalist Gavrilo Princip on June 28, 1914. Princip and other nationalists were struggling to end Austro-Hungarian rule over Bosnia and Herzegovina. The assassination of Franz Ferdinand set off a rapidly escalating chain of events. Austria-Hungary, like many countries around the world, blamed the Serbian government for the attack and hoped to use the incident as justification for settling the question of Serbian nationalism once and for all. Because mighty Russia supported Serbia, Austria-Hungary waited to declare war until its leaders received assurance from German leader Kaiser Wilhelm II that Germany would support their cause. Austro-Hungarian leaders feared that a Russian intervention would involve Russia's ally, France, and possibly Great Britain as well. On July 5, Kaiser Wilhelm secretly pledged his support, giving Austria-Hungary a so-called carte blanche, or blank check assurance of Germany's backing in the case of war. The dual monarchy of Austria-Hungary then sent an ultimatum to Serbia, with such harsh terms as to make it almost impossible to accept. Convinced that Austria-Hungary was readying for war, the Serbian government ordered the Serbian army to mobilize and appeal to Russia for assistance. On July 28, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, and the tenuous peace between Europe's great powers quickly collapsed. Within a week, Russia, Belgium, France, Great Britain and Serbia had lined up against Austria-Hungary in Germany, and World War I had begun. According to an aggressive military strategy known as the Schlieffen Plan, named for its mastermind, German Field Marshal Alfred von Schlieffen, Germany began fighting World War I on two fronts, invading France through neutral Belgium in the west and confronting Russia in the east. On August 4, 1914, German troops crossed the border into Belgium. In the First Battle of World War I, the Germans assaulted the heavily fortified city of Liege, using the most powerful weapons in their arsenal, enormous siege cannons, to capture the city by August 15. The Germans left death and destruction in their wake as they advanced through Belgium toward France, shooting civilians and executing a Belgian priest they had accused of inciting civilian resistance. In the First Battle of the Marne, fought from September 6 to 9, 1914, French and British forces confronted the invading Germany army, which had by then penetrated deep into northeastern France, within 30 miles of Paris. The Allied troops checked the German advance and mounted a successful counterattack, driving the Germans back to north of the Aisne River. The defeat meant the end of German plans for a quick victory in France. Both sides dug into trenches, and the Western Front was the setting for a hellish war of attrition that would last more than three years. Particularly long and costly battles in this campaign were fought at Verdun, February-December 1916, and the Battle of the Somme, July-November 1916. German and French troops suffered close to a million casualties in the Battle of Verdun alone. With World War I having effectively settled into a stalemate in Europe, the Allies attempted to score a victory against the Ottoman Empire, which entered the conflict on the side of the Central Powers in late 1914. After a failed attack on the Dardanelles, 
the strait linking the Sea of Marmara with the Aegean Sea, Allied forces led by Britain launched a large-scale land invasion of the Gallipoli Peninsula in April 1915. The invasion also proved a dismal failure, and in January 1916 Allied forces staged a full retreat from the shores of the peninsula after suffering 250,000 casualties. British-led forces also combated the Ottoman Turks in Egypt and Mesopotamia, while in northern Italy, Austrian and Italian troops faced off in a series of 12 battles along the Isonzo River, located at the border between the two nations. The first battle of the Isonzo took place in the late spring of 1915, soon after Italy's entrance into the war on the Allied side. In the 12th Battle of the Isonzo, also known as the Battle of Caporetto, October 1917, German reinforcements helped Austria-Hungary win a decisive victory. After Caporetto, Italy's allies jumped in to offer increased assistance. British and French, and later, American, troops arrived in the region, and the Allies began to take back the Italian front. In the years before World War I, the superiority of Britain's Royal Navy was unchallenged by any other nation's fleet, but the Imperial German Navy had made substantial strides in closing the gap between the two naval powers. Germany's strength on the high seas was also aided by its lethal fleet of U-boat submarines. After the Battle of Dogger Bank in January 1915, in which the British mounted a surprise attack on German ships in the North Sea, the German Navy chose not to confront Britain's mighty Royal Navy in a major battle for more than a year, preferring to rest the bulk of its naval strategy on its U-boats. The biggest naval engagement of World War I, the Battle of Jutland, May 1916, left British naval superiority on the North Sea intact, and Germany would make no further attempts to break an Allied naval blockade for the remainder of the war. World War I was the first major conflict to harness the power of planes. Though not as impactful as the British Royal Navy or Germany's U-boats, the use of planes in World War I presaged their later, pivotal role in military conflicts around the globe. At the dawn of World War I, aviation was a relatively new field, the Wright brothers took their first sustained flight just 11 years before, in 1903. Aircraft were initially used primarily for reconnaissance missions. During the First Battle of the Marne, information passed from pilots allowed the Allies to exploit weak spots in the German lines, helping the Allies to push Germany out of France. The first machine guns were successfully mounted on planes in June of 1912 in the United States, but were imperfect, if timed incorrectly, a bullet could easily destroy the propeller of the plane it came from. The Moraine Saulnier L, a French plane, provided a solution, the propeller was armored with deflector wedges that prevented bullets from hitting it. The Moraine Saulnier Type L was used by the French, the British Royal Flying Corps, part of the Army, the British Royal Navy Air Service and the Imperial Russian Air Service. The British Bristol Type 22 was another popular model used for both reconnaissance work and as a fighter plane. Dutch inventor Anthony Fokker improved upon the French deflector system in 1915. His interrupter synchronized the firing of the guns with the plane's propeller to avoid collisions. Though his most popular plane during World War I was the single-seat Fokker Eindecker, Fokker created over 40 kinds of airplanes for the Germans. The Allies debuted the Handley Page HP-0-400, the first two-engine bomber, in 1915. As aerial technology progressed, long-range heavy bombers like Germany's Gotha GV, first introduced in 1917, were used to strike cities like London. Their speed and maneuverability proved to be far deadlier than Germany's earlier Zeppelin raids. By war's end, the Allies were producing five times more aircraft than the Germans. On April 1, 1918, the British created the Royal Air Force, or RAF, the first air force to be a separate military branch independent from the Navy or Army. With Germany able to build up its strength on the Western Front after the armistice with Russia, Allied troops struggled to hold off another German offensive until promised reinforcements from the United States were able to arrive. On July 15, 1918, German troops launched what would become the last German offensive of the war, attacking French forces, joined by 85,000 American troops as well as some of the British Expeditionary Force, in the Second Battle of the Marne. 
The Allies successfully pushed back the German offensive and launched their own counteroffensive just three days later. After suffering massive casualties, Germany was forced to call off a planned offensive further north, in the Flanders region stretching between France and Belgium, which was envisioned as Germany's best hope of victory. The Second Battle of the Marne turned the tide of war decisively towards the Allies, who were able to regain much of France and Belgium in the months that followed.